feel like I've been anxious all my life. If you had asked me a year ago, I would have just said, nope, I have no anxiety, never heard of it, because um, it was uncomfortable to talk about. What does it mean to exist within two worlds? O waiwai e uana ki nga ao e rua, me pēhea te whakatere i te moana i nga e kumea na tātou ki wiwi, ki wāwā. Maybe it is these connections, woven from the strands of the DNA within us, where we can find safety. He ringa miri miri, he ahuru mō wai i nga tūrakitanga o te ao. Ko tainu e tuku waka, ko arapohata tuku maunga, ko te raparapa āhoe tuku awa, ko te ukaipo tuku marae, ko rākaua te tangata, ko te kaukauroa patisere te rohi. Ko Kirika Stewart tuku ingoa, i te taha o tuku pāpā he uriau nō te puke, nō Ngāti Waitaha, um, nō te poi, nō Ngāti Kirika, uh, nō ngā motu o Scotland hoki, i te taha o tuku māma he uriau nō Fiji, uh, me India. Tuku tūranga waiwai, kei kona e kei pōneke. We would go to the masjid or the mosque every Sunday and I would go and do classes and my mum would pray. I was the only kid who wasn't fully Indian and so they were like, do you, do you know what to do? Oh Allah, thank you for giving us a new life. Every day is a new life. Yeah, I definitely felt like an outcast. I started off at a kohanga. Kids were like, why are you Indian? Do you own a dairy? You know, all the typical stereotypes. I just remember being anxious, going to school every single day. Yeah, it's pretty shitty growing up like that. My parents had split the year I was born. My mum's house was just full of a lot of random people. She had quite a wide community at her doorstep. I was unfortunately a victim of sexual assault. I was about six years old. My main response was flee. I would just like move away from the situation. I'd probably go to school twice a week. I don't think I've been to school a full month in my entire life. I think it roots from the bullying, but it, it came from like major anxiety about having to be a certain person or fulfill certain roles to the point where I just wouldn't leave my house for weeks. My marae also gave me a reason not to leave. <laughs> I became my second school, and that was because my papa had allowed me. My papa came to Island Bay. When he got out of prison, he had $25 and a dream, as, as he says, and ended up building a tenso marae. The main reason for Tabitanga marae being built was for urban Māori to have an urban marae. So many Māoris were coming in from these small towns to find jobs, and we were the capital, and there were almost no marae around. This was the one place that anyone could call home, and you didn't even have to be Māori to be able to call Tabitarangi your home. That's just the kind of place I was. 
also Black Power and Rangoma built the marae together. I was talking to my brother Matai. He says, your dad would carry around a shotgun and if anyone pissed him off, he'd point it at them and that's how he controlled them. When Tapu Taranga burnt down, it burnt for three days. At the moment, it's, it's quite still down here. The grass is growing back over the top of the rubble. Uh, kei konei te marae, ahakoa kare kei konei he whare kei konei tonu te whenua, moa ke tonu atu. This here was the entrance to our house. And then we had the whare kai, whare waka, whare tupuna and the side dining room. And that's where we had all our pōwhiri in, in the, in the whare kai. We are starting to work on the rebuild. Pretty excited to see what the future holds for the marae. Growing up Muslim, we are actually quite a few tikanga. One is having tamako. You aren't allowed any types of tattoos. Tamako won that battle out for me. My first piece, which is the one on my chest here, I got this when I was 16. It was for my papa, because he had just passed, and to show our connection to Ngā Parifero, Red Rocks, is where Kupe's daughters slit their chests with obsidian and bled out and died the rocks. These are my second pieces, and they represent Tainui and Tarawaka. They look identical, but one is actually feminine and one's male. I have my spine done, and that is a nod to my marae when it burnt down. And then I have my tummy done. That talks about all these strong wahine in our life. And it was my connection to becoming a woman. From a girl. I feel like I've been anxious all my life. I've only just started to be more comfortable in my feelings, more open about seeking help. My trauma might be sad, but now it's a story that can help other rangatahi try and be more open. I think we're already on normalising mental health and trauma. So it's not a tapu or taboo subject to talk about. And if I'm starting to share with those samariki, maybe they'll start having the conversations earlier. Our generation are the conversation starters, and I think that's what I'm going to be doing for a, hopefully a long time. The journey to understanding yourself and your place in this world will not be a straight road. But as you peel back all the layers that bind you to your cultures, to your experiences, kahua he tangata hou, he tangata ora me te toa, gaining strength in the knowledge of who you are. Growing up, when someone asked me what ethnicity I was, I always said Māori, and they're like, are you sure about that? You're pretty white. <laughs> I have some people who say, you definitely look Māori. Look at your hair, or look at your dark brown eyes. I couldn't speak Māori. My skin wasn't brown enough whether I had a lot of Pākehā Fano. Well, where's your whakapapa? Why can't you speak te reo? Kia ora, ko Bailey Tumaipu tōku ingoa. He e uri tēnei nō Arung Whakata, Te Atanga Māki, Ngai Tūhoi, me Ngāti Pākehā hoki. E tupu ake au ki kāpiti, uh, engari e noho ana au ki wainui e mata i nai nei. Mā 
Kawai e whakatau kai hia tō tsua nui. Me pēhea tō whakahoki mai tērā i whanako hia, me te whai pā hautea tanga i roto i te whakanui i tō mana āhu āke. My mat's whakapapa confused me growing up. All of my cousins on my dad's side, apart from my sister and I, went to Kotakopapa. I asked my dad pretty recently why my sister and I didn't go to Kotakopapa, and he just said it was because my mum and him decided that it would be better that we were fluent in Te Pākehā, and if we decided when we were older to learn Te Reo Māori, like we could choose that for ourselves. For the last few years, I have had issues with learning new information about Māori history that we didn't learn in high school. All of these white people have done all of these terrible things to Māori and no one talks about it and we pretend like it never happened. I transferred all of that pain that I was feeling onto my Pākehā whānau unintentionally. Mum said to me once she thought that I not hated her, but disliked her because she made me Pākehā. Meeting different Rangatahi Māori that look like me and have had the same types of journeys as me that's been really validating as a young wahine Māori who doesn't necessarily look Māori. Whatever I do in my life, I'm Māori and it's awesome. I love being Māori. I started skateboarding when I was six. I have an older cousin and he had a skateboard and it had like flame grip tape and I thought that was really cool. And I rode his skateboard all the time. So I asked for a skateboard for my birthday and I got one and it had flames on the bottom, which I thought was super cool. We went to the skate park every day after school. As soon as I got home until I had to go home for dinner, I just loved the challenge of it and challenge of learning new tricks and stuff like that. I stopped when I was 12 because I'd been bullied at the skate park for being a girl, feeling like I was the only one. I didn't know any other girls that had skateboarded. Many comments from boys and men about how I wasn't allowed to be in this space. When I was 20, uh, I met a mate who used to skate as well, and we decided to pick it up together again. I find it really frustrating going to skate parks and being stared at and being questioned about how good you are. I've had that since I was six and I still get that as a 24 year old. Why am I a woman at a skate park? Why am I not sitting just watching and just looking for a boyfriend? Because that's apparently what people think girls come to skate parks for. This is a space I come to feel free let my thoughts go away and just have a skate. I recently just started my own skateboarding school uh, called Wahine Escape. It's my passion to teach other girls and women how to stand on a board and not feel afraid because that's a lot of what they feel when they come into that space is, oh, this is scary, this is for boys. you're still learning how to skateboard, like learning how to push and how to turn, do you want to come over with me? I went to the same skate park my whole life, never seeing another girl there. I had 28 girls at the skate park once that I grew up at and it was the best feeling in the world, seeing that many wahine there at a skate park. I had boys asking, why are you here? Like, 
can you not be in this space? These girls don't know what they're doing. And I said, no, <laughs> we're allowed to be here. Trying to protect those girls from what I faced as a little girl. And it's what I wish I had when I was a little girl, is other girls to go to the skate park with and just feel safe and feel like I was normal. Ia koe ka whakatau ki te tā moi i te tsuri-tsuri, me te tsuku i te neinei. Ka rongo koe i te wātea, me te tsuranga hakoa i tō mana āhua ake. I was still year nine, but I had turned 13, and we were going to Gisborne for Kapaka Nationals. The Komatua who spoke on the Hokainga side gave me a kiss, and then he said, Oh, are you the honky of the group? 13 year old girl just staring at him, like, Oh my god, what did you just say to me? I went in to get a kai. I saw the guy coming towards me again. Please don't come to me. Please just, just don't come to me. He comes to me and he says, if you want to roll with the Māoris, you've got to eat like a Māori. I don't understand what that even means. And he just started bursting out laughing. Even if he was joking, it felt awful being targeted out of a whole group of 40 people because of the colour of my skin. If I'm being honest, I don't think I have actually stopped to reflect on being this year nine girl to three years later being the voice of Māori Moana. Tsitsiro ki a koe i te whakāta, kouai kei te tsitsiro mai. I tō kiri ka whakamoho i te toto o raro iho, ka mutu i etahi e kohimu ana e hara ia i a tātou. Me pehea tō ū ki te aria motuhenga o tō mana āhuake. Nā wai i whakatau ko tō hononga ki tō ahurea e taia ana te whiri mā te tai o tō kiri. I used to do kapahaka practices in my high school years. I heard them whisper to one another, man, what is she even doing here? She's not even Māori. And so I was just sitting there eating my sandwich, like, what do you mean? Like, you know, I can hear you, right? I was really, really upset. As I got older and I had a lot of support around me, I realised, like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can be green, yellow, purple. If you're Māori, you're Māori. I had a lot to do with my grandparents on my mum's side growing up. My nanny koro. My koro had a big part in my Māori tanga. I was really lucky to have him there to help teach us, to help guide us. Every weekend I wasn't with him, it was because he was at the marae and he didn't want me to come because it would be too cold. Um, oh, I'm gonna cry. He actually passed away in September last year, so it was hard, but I'm grateful that I'm at this point now where I really didn't want to cry, sorry. This room is like my koro's man cave. He used to call it his koro cave. 
know, he used this cut room to kind of display how proud he was of his mokos. Like, he always had um, our pictures on the wall, um, certificates, photos, our Lego creations, like anything he could display of ours, he would. He was really vocal in letting us know that he was proud of us, which I appreciated. Um, yeah, there's a few things I've done since he's passed and I hope that he's, he's proud. The Disney film Moana was dubbed in Te Reo Māori here in New Zealand. Taika Waititi and Rachel House both put a video out on Facebook kind of saying, audition, like look at this awesome opportunity, you should send in a video. My mum sent it to me, I was a bit sceptical at first because oh no, I'm, I'm fair skinned and you know that's a really big platform and I might get a lot of, you know, opinions. I didn't really want to do it but my mum said like girl, just do it. So I just sent my video in and then like two weeks later we get an email um, saying can we have a Skype call with you and they said that I was the Māori Moana. I had to learn all of the songs in Te Reo Māori, I had to record them and then we spent a very long time doing the dialogue. Being in that film it's kind of cool because I feel like I have proven it to myself. I want to go back to that komatu and say, Kia I'm Māori, watch this movie. <laughs> E hara mā te tirohanga o te ao koe e arahi ki te whata o angi tū. Engari, mā te manapau i tēnā e pono ana ki a koe, nō u tō tua kiritanga. Wai hoki nō hia e taea e wai ake te tātari. Tātari.